I was sharing with first service, um, heart's extremely heavy. Um, it's going to take me a little while to get back to normal. But um, go with me to Hebrews 11, and I'll tell you what's going on. And um, bear with me this morning uh, all kinds of um, ranges of emotion, you know, high, low, pain, grief, sorrow, anger. Everything, um, going through a whole lot of it. So I want to just, just invite you to pray. Yeah. Hebrews 11 and 1. And then we'll share from there and allow God to speak to us. Hebrews there, say amen. amen. Verse 1 says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Some of your translation says substance of things hoped for. The conviction or evidence of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their condemnation, commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, the Bible says in verse 4, that Abraham offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain. Through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts as through his faith. Though he died, he still speaks. By faith, the Bible says, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And then verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And then verse 7, all the way to the remainder of the chapter, gives us a list of our heroes of faith and the things they did that preserves them or kept them and made them make the hall of faith. Look with me at verse 6 and repeat after me. Say, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God, come on, repeat that, must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Yeah. I want to talk to you this morning um, out of a heavy heart, out of my own personal pain, out of um, my own struggle with the subject matter, um, just this issue of faith. And, and I... I, I I want to be very cautious because I don't want nobody to think this morning I am being um, critical or I am being um, condescending or demeaning or accusatory in any shape, form, or fashion. Um, I just want you to hear my heart on a biblical perspective of the issue of faith. And the reason I'm saying that is um, I believe, um, and I'll just say it, faith teachers um, are damaging the body of Christ. I am going to say that. And I think um, there's nothing wrong with having faith. I believe in having faith. But I think there is an extreme where if faith and the concept of faith is not teaching in a biblical, taught in a biblical context, we end up causing a lot of damage to homes, to families, to individuals, and even people in their walk with God. Now, here's the reason I'm saying that. Um, this week, most of you know Pastor San. Um, used to be our executive pastor here, one part of our preaching team. Um, maybe some of the new individuals would not know him. But last night he lost his wife. Yeah, his, his wife um, transitioned to be with the Lord. And the reason for death was um, she's been going through a bout of cancer for a long time and had faith that God would heal her and... Um, opted not to go sought, seek the medical attention that's necessary because of her faith in God. Um, it didn't end what we would call in a good sense for her in that she died, but uh, Stan is in pain. It's painful for him. It's difficult for me. It's tough for our congregation that knew him, that lived life with him, that walked with him, because he's left behind to mourn the loss of his life. And the reason this is so dear to me is that this is one of many friends that I've lost um, with a similar mindset. Um, when we first planted the church many years ago, we had a young man 
that worked for Compassion International but was a ministry partner with us, a very vibrant young person, loved God, served God wholeheartedly, but he contracted a bout of cancer. And there's nothing we can do to talk, his name was Vince Guillory, to go get medical ascension. Vince's song and dance was that I have faith in God and I'm believing God for my healing. Well, needless to say, um, it wasn't long after that that he lost his life to the bout with cancer. And I'm starting to see this more and more in the body of Christ. I just want to talk about that. I just want to address that. Um, Sharif was sharing with me this morning that uh, after he heard the message for service, that um, he lost a niece in the same way. Um, I think the way you share with me that your niece, though, was a Jehovah's Witness. Did I get that right? And Jehovah's Witness don't believe in even going to, um, to seek medical help. And so by the time she came to her senses and she thought about her family and they're going to be left behind, it was too late. So I have a concern. I have a concern. I have a concern. Is that all right, guys? I have a concern. I have a concern. I have a concern for what we hear, what we listen to. And so I just want to open God's Word and allow God's Word to speak to us because I don't want us to keep um, falling prey to this, and I don't want us to, to not have faith in God, but I want us to understand how this works together and um, so we can understand it. So go with me to the book of James, James chapter 2. And I'm just going to spend the entirety of my time just reading these verses and explaining them and illustrating them the best that I can. So my hope and my goal is when you leave here today, um, we know what it means to put our faith in action, and we can trust God at a completely different place. So if you're in James chapter 2, say amen so I can know that you're there. Amen. James chapter 2, and look down with me at verses 14, and I'm going to read verses 14 through verse uh, 28, and then we'll talk to that. Say amen one more time if you're there. Amen. Now, before I read, here's what I need you to know. Um, most people, when they read James or when they read Paul, they hear Paul talk about having faith in God, and, and we think that's the sum total of it, that it's just faith, faith passively, and we don't understand the active side of the faith, the faith that we must do something about it. It's not just believing God can, but it's also working with God. So James picks up the argument, and I think James among, uh, is probably one of the best passages to help us get a good theological framework on what faith is all about. So let me walk through this, and hopefully this will be able to strengthen your faith in God so that God can move and have his way. Look at what verse 14 says. James opens up by saying, What good is it, my brothers if, or sisters, if someone says he or she has faith but does not have works? You guys are there? Say amen if you're there. Let me read it one more time because I want you all to see this. We've been seeing this for a long time, but I don't know that we've been seeing the essence of what it's saying. What good is it, my brother or sisters, if someone says he, has, he or she has faith but does not have works, and my translation has a question mark. And look at the rhetorical question that he asked right now. Can that faith save him or her? Okay? So let me, let me explain that real quick. Here's what James is saying. What good is it to say that I have faith alone and no works, and then here's what James is saying, and we miss this. Can that faith alone save him or her? Okay? And that word save is a very, very critical word. It's the Greek word sozo. And even though it has to do with salvific save, meaning that we're getting, we can put ourselves in the presence of God, all that stuff, it also means deliverance. So here's what that looks like. If I'm going through something, if I am experiencing something, if I am praying for something, and all I have is faith alone, here's what this says. Can faith alone get me that thing that I'm believing for? Are you hearing me? I want us to walk. Does faith alone save, so is the Greek word, deliver him or her, okay? And then here's how he, he illustrates it right away. He says this in verse 15. If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to him, go in peace, be warm and filled without, and watch the action word, Giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? 
So here's what this looks like. And, and, and bear, forgive me for being so um, elementary, but I want us to get this. Somebody comes in and says, man, I'm naked. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten. I don't have clothes. It's winter coming. And here's what you said. Believe God. Or I believe God. James is saying at the end of your belief in God, they're still going to be hungry. They're still going to be naked. They're still uh, uh, If you don't do, and here's what he says, if you say I believe God, but you don't do anything about the situation, is that faith? Oh, my gosh. Are, are you all hearing me? I mean, that's what James is raising. He's raising the issue, okay? So, and then he says, um, verse 17, so faith by itself, if it does not have works, is what? You can believe God all you want. You just believe God. I can be trusting God for, and if I don't do something about it, I'm just trusting God for. It's just belief without anything to substantiate it, to bring it into reality. And he's saying you can't have faith alone if you don't attach works to the faith that you have. And my concern for the church is that we come to church and we're such a passive people. Well, excuse the term. We're such a lazy people. We want God to do everything. So here's what he said. Baby, I'm believing God for. I'm believing God. But you ain't doing nothing about what you're believing God for. So here's what this looks like. I mean, you can believe God. Lord, I'm believing you for a job. And you wake up every morning and turn your TV on and watch TV. But I'm, come on, y'all. Is that faith? I think James is saying you believe God for, but you better go fill out some applications. Come on, you better put your resume together. You better go apply someplace and beat some streets and then believe God for the best after you've done you, all you can. God puts that together and he calls that faith. Come on, is this making sense? He says, he says look at this, um, verse 18. Someone will say, and we see this in church a lot, you have faith, and I have works. Here's what James says. Show me your faith apart from your works. I got to pause there. You got faith, and I got works. Here's what he says. Show me. And he's almost raising the question, it's literally impossible for you to show me your faith if you don't show me something that you're doing. Here's what he says. I will show you my faith by my what? By what I do. I believe God for, but watch my action to show you I'm going to work where God is working and God and I are going to work together to deliver the thing. Look at what he says here in, verse, in this next verse. I really, really like this. He says, you believe that there is one God. Cool. That's what you do well means. He said, but even the demons believe. And then it says, and they shudder or they tremble. Now, this is important. This is important. Here's the church. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. But nothing changes. We take no action. We do nothing different about it. Here's what James says. See, the devil understands faith more than you. He says the demonic realm understands faith more than you. Here's how he says this. They believe there's one God. And watch what they do. These tremble. Their belief in God forces a reaction or a response from them. And their trembling is the fact that they have sense enough to know that if God says it, God's going to do something. So it forces them to some sort of a response. But for us, here's what we say. We believe God. We believe God. And it's just this passive thing. And it forces no response. It forces no action. It forces no behavior. It forces nothing out of it. We're just living life passively, believing God, and not doing anything about what we say we believe. James says that's not faith. That's dead and you wonder why you're still broke because you believe in God for, but you won't get a job. You wonder why your situation still exists because you believe in God for, but you won't go do nothing about it. You guys are with me? 
So look at what he says in the next, the next phrase. Look at this. He says, do you want, verse 20, do you want me to show you, and he uses a harsh word, foolish person, he says, that faith apart from works is useless. And then he says, was not our Abra father Abraham justified by, what's the word? Works. works when he offered his son Isaac on that altar. Here's what he says in verse 22. You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was, what's the word? Completed. The Greek word is teleos, or made perfect, some of your translation, by his works. Okay, I'm going to come back to that. And so the scripture was fulfilled that said that Abraham believed God, and it was credited or counted to him as righteousness. Go back to verse 21. It says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? If you were to go to Genesis and read that account of God speaking to Abraham, here's what God says. God says to Abraham, Abraham, take your son, your only son Isaac, and go offer him on an altar at this place that I'm going to show you. And Abraham could have said, okay, God, I believe you. But the Bible's clear. He heard, he picked up the boy, and he started to walk towards the altar, right? Now, here's what he said. This is the deep part of the faith. Here's what he said to the servants that were with him. You stay here. I and the boy are going to go over there, and we're going to worship God. Then we are going to return. Lock into the faith, okay? So God tells me to go kill him on the altar. Guess what I'm getting ready to do? Because God said it. I'm not just going to believe. I'm going to do something about what God said, so he takes the boy, he goes to the altar, and here's the faith that he has in God, that if I obey God in doing something about what God says, God has the power to raise him up. Amen. Wow. So we're going, and we're going to come back. We're going, and we're going to come back. Here's what we do. I believe God, and we haven't left yet. We haven't done anything about it yet. We're still waiting. We're still sitting. We're still inactive. We haven't done anything about it yet. So then here's what he says. He says, was not our father Abraham justified by works when he offered Abraham and uh, I mean Isaac on the altar? Look at verse 22. You see that faith was active or working together along with his works and his faith. What was the word? Completed by his what? Now please hear me. I am not saying that, that God cannot do what God wants to do. I, I think what I want you to hear me say that I, I want us not misinterpret is that when we're believing God for something, God invites us to work with him to show our faith in him. Amen. The one example that keeps coming to mind, given my current pain, my current situation, my current circumstance, is my own story. I can't help but go there. I, 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 in case you didn't know, um, God has graced me with surviving cancer, but I will never forget, um, I was in a coma for 18 days in the hospital, um, going through all kinds of surgery, all kinds of stuff for the doctors to do what they could do to, to heal. Um, and on an operating table, I, operating table, I never remember dying twice and having to be resuscitated. I thank God my wife loved me enough that she didn't sign the do not resuscitate order. Because some wives, and then let me leave that alone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thank you. Glad you love me enough, babe. I love you too, boo. Yeah. So I owe her my life. So here's what this looks Yeah, amen. I really, really do. I remember, this is a sidebar, this is a sidebar, but I have to share this. I, my wife was sharing, and the nurses and the doctors were sharing with me part of that experience, and I'll get back to this story, is my life was so gone that they were threatening to cut my throat and put a trach in um, because I was going, um, not going to make it. And I'll never forget doctors saying to me, your wife told us, don't you dare touch his throat. Uh, that's how he does what God call him to do. And doctor scratched his head, boy, going to die. What's the point? Right? So here's what this looked like. They have me wide open. I've been open for 12 days. I'll never forget this. Um, the, I mean, stomach wide open. 18, was it 12 surgeries in those 18 days? Um, they'd done two resuscitations. 
doctor came out and said to my wife, and uh, how much? I can't hear you. I died three times. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, wow, wow. She, she, it's in the record. They came out and they said to my wife, call his family, call his brothers and sisters, um, and start making funeral arrangements. He's not going to be here tomorrow. This is what they said. And I'll never forget it was Katani, Pastor Bob was in the room, because Bob reminded me of this the other day. Hey, don't forget there, buddy. I was there praying for you. So, <laughs> doctor came out and said to Katani, um, he's, we've done all we can. He's done. And I kid you not, she looks at the doctor and says to him, hey, doc, uh, I have faith. You have works. So why don't you go in there and do your work? I'm going to do my faith. You kind of get what I'm saying? And together, we're going to see what God's going to do. And, and I'm saying that to say, because I remember vividly, Topaz, um, I, I, the pastors in the city still says this to say this to me. You organized a prayer meeting and had all the clergy here in this place praying and seeking God while the doctors were doing their thing. You, you, faith works. Faith, uh, faith works. Are you hearing me? Faith works. Not Katani say, we believe God, we're going to hold a prayer meeting over him. Thank you, Doc. Go on about your business. No, 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 no. We fit in the pray. And you fit in the cut. <laughs> so let me help you understand how this works theologically, doctor. I don't have that kind of work. You do, but I have faith. And I believe God, and we're going to mix the faith with the works together and let God, so, so it doesn't, because my faith by itself is dead, but I know faith and works complete, I wish I had somebody in here, completes each other so God can do what God wants done. Amen. Here's what this looks like. A year plus later when, um, and I had, I, I think I had the chief surgeon um, at, at Franklin Center at the time. I walked into that guy's office. Over a year later, um, when I was released to oncology, um, he looked me dead in the eye, and this chief professional, many, many years of surgery, looked me dead in the eye and just starts crying. And he says to me, I have no medical reason to explain why I'm watching you. He says, by all records, you should be dead. I can't say that we took this and we took that and we took this and we did this and we did that and you're alive and we fixed you. He says, everything we did said you should be dead because it was a hopeless case. Are you hearing me this morning? Faith mixed with works. I, I need to drive that illustration home and that point home because I think as a body of Christ, we know that God is omnipotent. We know that he's omniscient. We know all that about God. And sometimes we passively put all the work on God, and we don't want to work with him. And he's extending an invitation. I know what I can do. I want you to show me what you believe in me by you working with me. Come on, that's, that makes sense. And, and, and I want to drive that point home so we don't miss that because too much damage is being done in the body of Christ with people saying, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith, and we're missing what God is doing. So notice how this, this, this goes on. He says, verse, um, verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called, the text says, a friend of God. And then look at verse 24. He sums it up. You see, a person... It's not justified. And I know he's talking about salvative faith. I know that. I know that. But the same is true all around. A person, it says, is, um, is justified by works and not by faith alone. And then he says, in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, don't miss this. So also faith apart from works is what? Dead. Dead. My concern, and I know I sound like a broken record, I'm tired of bad teaching. I am. I'm, I'm tired of it. It's, it's hurting me. It's hurting families. It's hurting bodies. Uh, um, and, and so you could know in case you're concerned, I, I didn't say this, but... My great friend, Pastor Stan, and I, we have this discussion a lot, and he believes exactly like I do. He, we're on the same page. We synchronize on that. It's just that there's others not there. 
and it causes things because I heard such and such a faith teacher say, so I'm believing God. I heard such and such a faith teacher say, so I'm believing God, and we don't go the next step. You've got to do both. Are you hearing me this morning, church? You've got to do both. I can't say it enough. You have to do. You have to do both. There's a positive side of that, that my sister Diane, um, she's gone on from earth. And the other side of that is that I wonder sometimes, man, what type of faith did this woman have that caused her to persevere through that situation and believe God like that? I know the Bible says in, I think it's Philippians 1.21, um, where it talks about that when we leave here, we go to be with the Lord. I'm paraphrasing what that says. But I want to share this passage in, um, in 2 Corinthians. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, I think Philippians says, to, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. But let me read, let me read, let me read Corinthians 5. And I want to talk about this then. We're going to pray and allow some time to pray. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look with me at verse 1 through 10. And I want to read this. Let me know if you're there by saying amen. amen. Here's what this says. It says, for we know that if the earthly tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put our heavenly dwelling, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, by putting it on, we may not be found naked, for while we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by this life. And it says, he who has prepared for us the very thing is God, who has given us the scripture as a guarantee. The spirit, thank you. I said scripture this morning too. Thank you in it as a guarantee. Verse uh, 6. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We walk by faith, see it there, and not by sight. Yes, it says we are of good courage and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Two illustrations. I gave one this morning. My wife says this to me when I ask her, what was your faith? What gave you the strength to keep the faith? Katani said to me that my faith and works was like this. I'm believing God for healing. I'm taking you to the doctor, and I'm going to encourage them to do their thing. And I'm going to believe God and I'm let the doctors work. And here's what she said. She still says this today. If God chose to heal you, I'm happy. If he takes you home, I'll have to replace you. But <laughs> no, I'm going to come back and haunt whoever it is. Yeah. Oh, they, oh ain't nobody going to get my boo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, but I had the assurance that whether God healed you or not, you're going to be okay because you're in the presence of God. Yeah. You kind of get what I'm saying? That's, that's heavy. That's heavy. So she makes work with her faith, but she wouldn't, you know, if, if I went on, she'd mourn, but she'd still be happy because I'm in the presence of God. I processed my sister Diane, and I said she chose not to go to the doctor. And I asked myself this difficult question. Could it be that the reason she didn't do that is because she has such a relationship with God that she believed God for the healing and left the hospitals out to say that, God, if you heal me, for me to live is Christ. I'm going to honor you and glorify you and spread your word like nobody's business. But God, even if you don't heal me, I'm going to be with you. And it's still going to be okay. You kind of get what I'm saying? So I'm wondering if her faith was like, whether I die or whether I live, it's a win. Yeah. You kind of get what I'm saying? It's a win any way you look at it. And sometimes when I process through those lens, I say, Lord, I wish I had, I, I hope I have faith like that. 
Uh, but I still understand theologically that for my faith to really work, I need to attach works with it. You kind of get what I'm saying? And I've got to do something and don't just sit passively um, because any one of those situations, you look at it, if we know Christ, we end up to be with Christ. We, we end up in the presence of God, and that's the good side of it. But this is a very, very difficult situation for me. It's, it's difficult for a lot of our church brothers and sisters because we love Stan and we love Diane. Come on, y'all. And we care dearly about them. And, and Katani and I had a chance to spend uh, some time last night with Stan, and I watched his pain. I watched his confusion. I watched his everything. And, and I'm saying to the body of Christ, faith mixed with works makes it complete. Yeah, I'm saying that. Amen. And I want you to hear me say that because that's James' argument. I believe God, yes. And I do what God tells me to. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I want to pray. I want Katani to pray. I want Pastor Derek to pray. I want us to pray for our congregation, pray for this family. I'm praying that this word means something for you. God can give you whatever, and, and, and broad wash it however you want, job, homes, husbands, wives, whatever, whatever. Don't sit passively is what I'm saying to you. Believe him and walk it out. Believe him. Come on, Pastor Kay. Come on, Pastor Derek. And I want us to pray, and at the same vein, if, if you're struggling with something, I want us to learn to cry out to God, to allow God to be God, grab the mic, God in our midst so that we can trust him like that. And on the same vein, those of us that know our brother, let's love him. Let's be there to support him, and this is our, his hour of need. Um, let's walk this out with him. Very, very painful situation, and we know what a blessing to this ministry Pastor Stan was, so we thank God for that, yeah. So, Pastor Tani, lead us in a time of prayer. Just praying. Um, come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Yeah, yeah. Bless you, Lord. Most precious God, Lord, we just thank you this morning, Father, for the word that has come forth, Lord. Uh, Father, we thank you for the life of Diane, Father God, the work and the impact that she left on this ministry, Lord. It will never be forgotten, Lord. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for her faith, God. Uh, for her, her faith in you, her faith in her healing, Lord. And everything lies within your will, and it was your will for her to come home. So, God, we thank you now that she is at peace, Lord. Father God, we ask for uh, just the ministering angels to be around Pastor Stan at this time, Lord, as he grieves the, the loss of his love, his life, God, and for LaVar losing his mom, Father God. We just pray as a church family that we will come around them and support them, Lord. Although they are no longer at this house, they are still family, God, and we so much appreciate them. And Father God, for those in the congregation that are dealing with situations, God, that they've been believing on, Father God, that they've been uh, actively having faith on, God, that they understand through this word, Lord, it's faith and works, Lord. Father God, you're not a magic genie, God, that you're just going to just, you can do it. You can fix it, God, but... You want to activate our faith. You want to activate the works in us, God. So, Father God, whether you choose to, to perform a miracle or not, we still know that you are God. We still know that you are in control, God. We still trust you, and we still love you, God. Now let us hold this word in our hearts, God, that I've got to do my part. Yeah. In Jesus' name.